The following is a non-profit fan-based parody. Thomas the Tank Engine friends is the property of Mattel, Hen Entertainment, Golem Pictures, and the Britoff Craft Company. Please support the official release. So make sure you go out to buy all of our toys and products, DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, especially the 20th anniversary of the Magic Railroad movie that came out recently. And be a good sport and do the right thing. Cheers! Greetings everyone, this is your sexy voice like narrator here to tell you about the dark tale of one of the most diabolical villains the show has ever seen. No, not him. Or him. Or her. Or them. Okay, that's not even from the same series. His name is George the Steamroller. It started when he was at a quarry with Scar, Lurie and Grineas, waiting for Percy to take him away to another part of the island. George and Scar, Lurie were arguing about railways being replaced. Sorry George, but these rails are here to stay. Just you wait you piece of scrap. There have been many railway lines closing down all over the world and being replaced by glorious gravel. Obviously you haven't noticed that this is an island with colorful talking trains. Everyone around the world would want to come here for that reason alone. Well, obviously you can't see how much space your rails are taking up on this island. But as soon as the Bubble Man himself realizes our lorries are far more efficient than locomotives, it'll all be over, you steamies. Oh, good gracious, are you telling us that lorries will take over our duties? Wait a second, didn't three of them come here not too long ago? Of course they did. And it's happening now as we speak. The extermination of locomotives has begun. The fat controller has ordered workmen to tear off the rails. Bulgy has been resurrected in the repair yard. Butch has gone a phase to communicate his hatred towards you all. Jack in the pack shall join now. Epic fail. I was doing a space of <laughs> Anyways. Jack in the pack! Actually, he's right. Because you see, George, the three lorries became so exhausted that they inhaled their own exhaust, and they are, were no longer operative. You dismantled them, didn't you? What?! You dismantled the lorries out of fear of being overruled by road vehicles, but have been factually proven to be superbly useful in the modern era of transportation. An economic essential for many industries, you will not deceive me into believing you didn't dismantle them. We didn't have anything to do with their failures. Besides, we don't have hands to dismantle anyone, even if we wanted to. Badly. Before they could argue anymore, Percy puffed in to collect George and then chuffed away with him. <sighs> Finally, that steamroller is gone. I gotta say, you're pretty awesome at telling everyone what is right, Scarloey. Ah, well you see, that's how I became a fan favorite. Yeah, a really useful- wait, what does that make me? Soon, George arrived at the old branch line, but he didn't like Percy bumping him around. What was all that about? That was payback for being so rude to Sir Handel, like, three years ago. Do you even know who he is? Of course I do! He's the yellow one, right? The one, the one who likes rock and roll? <sighs> you know, it's mutton like you that reaffirmed my declaration that railways should be torn up, turned into roads. Hey, that's not very nice. I'm gonna tell my friends on you. <laughs> and what do you think they would do to me? Well, Dad, there's this one engine at Kirk Ronan who can cause engines to have a phobia of walls. <laughs> That's your <laughs> you green caterpillar! <laughs> you know I'm not a wind turbine! You've inhaled enough oxygen! 
Oh, oh, maybe you can help me suck the dirt out of my belly button. There's gunk, there's sand, there's dust, and a rat's nest. Get a shower! Stupid George, call me a green caterpillar, making me faint. What's wrong, Percy? Oh, I just heard something that upset me today. So you found out McDonald's just discontinued the shaker fries. Wait, seriously? They got rid of them again?! CRAP! This day just keeps getting worse! So, what was upsetting you before? I forgot. <sighs> seriously, Percy, you can't forget something like that in a split second. It just makes you your adultish. So, if I can remember what I was thinking about a moment ago, then I will be a smart engine? No, not really, Percy. You'll just be... <gasps> I'll become the king of the monkey palace in India! No, no, per Percy, that's impossible to achieve. Because there's no profit in monkey business, I'm afraid. Oh, I just remembered! I was talking to George over by the branch line, and he was... very hurtful towards me. George? I thought he was permanently sacked! Yeah, it turns out second chances apply to steamrollers too. Well, have to tell the other engines to be on the lookout for him. If he kept causing trouble for the narrow gauge engines, he's bound to pull some tricks upon us as well. Now wasn't I supposed to be ruler of the Planet of the Apes or something? Later, back at the old branch line, George was feeling happier than ever with his job, and how the workmen were helping him out. Oh, happy day. You're all doing a great job. I know for a fact your wives and children at home will be very proud of what hard-working blokes you all are. Why, thank you. That's very polite of you to say. No need to thank me. It's a tough job whenever we work on building a new road. <laughs> a road to a future without rails. Hey, Thomas! Look at this! Oh, Bavis, George. Just ignore him, Thomas. Just ignore him. Continue puffing on by. Look at me! Look at me! Darn it! I must have been causing enough chaos as I hoped. Guess I have to do something a little more chaotic. But how? Excuse me, sir, but what are we doing here at the crossing? Oh, yeah, she didn't think about this part. Say, fellas, why don't we just roll some cement over those tracks? That way we can get to the other side. Mm -hmm. It's still an active line, you know. I mean, surely you just saw Thomas puff on by, right? I know, but we have to get it done before the hot dog truck comes by today. The hot dog truck? My goodness, how can I forget the hot dog truck? All those lovely hot dogs. Alrighty then, throw some cement over and then we'll get back to it later. Awesome! <laughs> Ah, now to play the waiting game. Any minute now. It won't be long. And it's the worst game ever! Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Beg pardon, sir, but can you please move aside? I can't. I've got something jammed. Can you at least try? I need to clear the line before Jordan comes through. Well, I'm stuck. Therefore, he will just have to wait. Well, I can see if this conversation isn't going to be resolved anytime soon. Ah, uh, might as well grab myself a cup of coffee. What's your name? My name is Jo- <clears throat> Montague! I can't let them know my real name. I am so close to closing railways forever and I cannot let myself get carried away. Probably should have came up with a better name than Montague. I mean, who calls himself that? That's like the fakest name ever. That's actually my real name. Uh, 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 Your name wouldn't happen to be George, would it? 
Uh, you don't have a brake van! I'm not falling for your cheap distractions. Hey, Doc, where's your brake van? Oh, really? I don't have one? Well, thank you, Mr. Steve Roller, for informing me. I must have left it back. And holy jeepers, he's already here! Gordon, slow down, I can't move! Don't bother. And that gets monetized, 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 and that gets monetized. Oh, Fudge cake. Creative freedom! Woo! Huh. Guess I made his day better. Phew! That crash could have been a lot worse if I hadn't forgotten my brake van. But at the same time, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a- Ow! My coupling rods! Aw, oh, man. This is the second time I've come crashing into this chicken barn. You didn't buy any chicken burgers at the butcher since the last time you busted outdoors. No? Yeah, I should hope so. <laughs> you suck, Thomas. <laughs> You'll be grazing in the barn now. <laughs> Children crave for crashes every day! The next day at Titman Sheds, the engines held an indignation meeting, which would mean they are skipping their jobs, which means they are not being really useful, so that must mean... Can we just get on with this already? Don't make me pull out my narrator gun! And so the meeting commenced. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ow! But, but, but my beard! Oh, you son of a cheesecake! Oh! Oh, sorry! Left the safety off! This is a new form of scum we're dealing with here on the island, my friends. He needs to be stopped before another accident occurs. I crashed into a bomb because he ripped the rail lines from the branch line! Yes, Thomas, we understand your accident. Which is why I have figured out the perfect method of dismantling that machine of the Infernal once and for all. I don't think he's that bad. He called you a galloping sausage. Okay, you two can start the bonfire. Really? Bonfire it is. It's about blooming time. We've been keeping this gasoline from Bertie for way too freaking long. That's not what I was considering, fellas. Then what was it? Only the wisest way of defeating enemies, by making them our friend. Thus, we must send in the ponies. What? You know, a bit of magical friendship? I'd rather be friends with dirty objects. Oh, that is not what I was referring to! I have a better solution. Why don't we just tell the Fat Controller about George? Oh, right, uh, that's a good one too. So, we're not doing the bonfire? Not this time, fellas. Well, we're not holding on to this anymore. <coughs> we may get sent back to Scotland if they catch us. After they spoke to Sir Topham Hatt, Thomas and Percy stopped by to see George several days later. Well, well, well. You're cousin the naughty corner, Percy. I don't see anyone getting spanked. I was talking about George over there. Oh, right, right. <clears throat> well, well, well. The steamies win again against the non-steamies. First the diesels, then the lorries, and now... Oh, my Metal Gear Solid, shut up! Your voice is so unbearably annoying. Ear bleeding. Oh, with delivering a IQ level of social media mentally sinking into the blackest abyss of a Mariana trench while cosplaying as Manetta for my hero academia. Directed by Christopher Nolan and ending worse than Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5! Bubblegum! Butterflies! Gun candy shoved right up your- Finally! Lastly! A 
and after all of that... And... Hold up! Keep censoring me! Must... Value... The children... No... Lawsuits! So George, how did you get caught? Wink! I got told off by the fat controller! Oh really? I am surprised. Yeah, and soon you'll be sent away like the rest, and never be seen again! Or for like a week or so! What? We'll be safe from him, Thomas. Remember, Percy, he's the only steamroller on the island. Ah, well in that case we're screwed. Wait until Buster arrives. Really? Your memory is so awful you cannot recall iconic characters, but you can remember one of the more obscure characters of his stupid franchise? Well, none of it matters! Especially how my other plan is already underway! What of a plan? A demon will soon rise from the underworld who will modify your iconic characteristics into indistinguishable now-minded halfwits for the rest of eternity. With Ronnie talent so abysmal, it makes four kids entertainment themselves cringe. Her name... Is... Okay, I have had enough of this. This has been burning in my boiler for too long now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Sharon Miller doesn't deserve all the hate she gets. I mean, yes, she did write a few bad episodes. Episodes? Uh, seasons. But she was only allowed to do what she could write under Hit's writing format. So can we please stop bullying the poor woman? Acknowledge that it wasn't her or the director's fault, but the producers influencing the type of storytelling at the time of the Hit era. And yes, we are allowed to critique the episodes of what we like and don't like about them. And trust me, there are awesome things that... that doesn't really stand out the test of time. But to call Sharon Miller a demon of all things, only for writing a few mediocre episodes that no one remembers, is absolutely asinine. Plus, she's a good voice director, making the acting, at the very least, tolerable to sift through, so she has my vote on that. Thomas, are you sacrificing story and character to tell a moral? An important moral, Percy. That is so sad. How could I have misjudged her? How could I be so cruel? Can we be friends instead? Please? back in business. But seriously, fellas, can one of you fix my face? I think the glue is starting to wear off. Nope, sorry. You'll have to wait for the next shipment to arrive. Dang it!